Seeing multiple species together can be both an exciting and educational experience. But letting species share an area in captivity can be a complicated task even if the animals live side by side in the wild. Therefore it can be useful to know how to trick your zoo visitors into thinking the animals are in the same space even when they are not. A way to do this is simply by placing the barrier between the animals areas somewhere where the guest cannot see it. Often done by playing around with the terrain or placing plants or something else in front of it. Hidden barriers are a concept you can find in real zoos and today I'll show you how I made it work in Planet Zoo. According to Planet Zoo, keeping black wildebeest together with the new blue wildebeest is a good idea. This is probably based on the fact that these two species sometimes move around together in the wild. But since I and probably a lot of you likes to play with realism in mind, letting these two species share an enclosure in a zoo is not really a good idea. The two wildebeest are so closely related that in real life they could end up breeding together. And creating hybrid animals is not something a modern zoo wants to do. But since I want to teach my visitors here in the Twilands about how you tell these two species apart and also about their relation in the wild, I would like to create the illusion of them being in the same habitat. So I created two dry savanna style habitats with multiple species and then made a hidden barrier between them. The front habitat is shared by black wildebeest and springbok. The left side of the habitat goes against the staff area and the parking lot of the zoo. This part consists of more visible fences since you can barely see this part when you stand in the African area, but already from the parking lot you can actually get a peek into this habitat. This is also the first enclosure you see when you enter the Kalahai and Namib desert area, one of my two African areas. And already from the start the immersive experience begins. At a first look it appears like the only thing between you and the animals is a low fence and some foliage. But if we step inside of the habitat we can see that in fact the terrain in the front of the the enclosure is kept low and a wall is keeping the animals in a safe distance from the guests. The terrain in the middle of the enclosure is on a level similar to where the people are standing. This gives the feeling of being in eye level with the animals. Then in the back of this habitat the terrain will again be lowered followed by another wall. Behind this wall we'll find the second and bigger habitat. This is shared by the blue wildebeest, gemsbok and plain zebra. The zebras move here from another part of the zoo. This habitat is built in a similar way way, low in the front and the back. The raised terrain in the middle is this time slightly taller in some areas to make the animals in this enclosure easier to see when you stand in front of the first enclosure. To make the immersive feeling even greater I also used a bit of a trick behind the back wall. Here you'll find a row of rocks and foliage. Then again found the background even more plants is placed on a higher level of terrain and in front of this there is a lot of empty space. But from a distance the foliage will make it hard to sense where the habitat ends and the front row of foliage blends together with the foliage in the far back. This makes the whole enclosure appear more or less borderless making it feel like you're looking at a big open savanna in Africa even though we are in a zoo in a North American desert. A few acacia trees have also been planted to add to the African feeling. These stables for the animals are also mostly out of sight but these buildings are still a bit of a work in progress. The right side of the big habitat is a little less immersive. Instead you'll here be able to get a closer look to the animals in here. A small shelter is also built into the side wall. The immersive experience might be improved even more in the future since I'm considering using the empty space behind these habitats for elephants but I'm not totally sure about that yet. On the right side in an area less visible for the guests I built a cattle grid between the two enclosures. Most hoof stock species are not able to walk over these, but a keeper in a car or similar would be able to drive over it. This makes it easier for the staff to go from one enclosure to the other. Of course, this is only an implied feature, which does not work in the game. These savannas are part of the Kalahai and Namib desert area in the dry lands. I'll soon continue and probably finish this area with a few additional species and adjustments. If you want to see how this all turns out, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave this video a like.